Hey, how are you? It's Patty Carpenter. And today I'd like to thank Wendy Goodman and her team for allowing us to take over this incredible design hunting. We are going to have such a good time. I am so looking forward to being with you, sharing this time with the extraordinary Zenobia Bailey. Zenobia is a self-described cultural activist, designer, and artist. Um, and if you've ever gone through the number seven train uh, down at the new Hudson Yards, then you have been uh, underneath that incredible multi-layered and colorful environment that she's created. She is a force of nature, so many layers and so many projects. And today we're just going to skim the surface of one of the projects that she's got going on that's entitled Paradise Under Reconstruction in the Aesthetic of Funk, Living a Dream in a Nightmare. I'm sure we can all identify with that. So without further ado, hello, Zenobia, are you there? Yeah, can you see me? I can hear you and see you. We are going to do this part deux. <laughs> hey, How are you today? Good. Do I need to... Um, Turn your screen so that the gentleman is right side up. That's not a gentleman. That's my mother. <laughs> oh, sorry. From the sea, she's sideways. So from the other uh, side, I can't see you. Okay. How are you? I don't know how to do the... Um, oh, God. Just turn I... your entire screen. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Oh. So Perfect. This, so we're starting with your mom today. Yes, my first teacher. On the okay. Path, my mother. Um, right. I will go through these real fast. Yeah, this is before children. So. Okay. You know, yeah, my mother was an extremely creative woman, um, a good mathematician, but um, okay. she never really went into that area. My mother used to do mathematical equations like people would do uh, crossword puz puzzles. Oh, my stars. Okay. Yeah. That's fabulous. Um, but she, well, one... but her, her occupation, she was a, a domestic worker, you know, she didn't, okay. you know, have that opportunity to really, um, but this is where I got my whole um, um, practice of the African American homemaker because she was such, oh my God, her and my father were very, you know, they were engineer inclined, you know. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they could they could make anything out of nothing, you know. So, well, this is like so many of us can. Well, I oh. want to interject just one thing to let the people who are tuning in know, and thank you all for being here. Um, I, what we're going to talk about today really is a very particular portion of what Zenobia has been working on because we've been discussing she and I this whole idea of the of well being and wellness under the um, now normal of, of COVID and, and uh, the pandemic. And so one of the things that we were talking about is the African-American connection to nature and the land. And she's got some incredible things to share with us, but I just wanted to fr frame the, the conversation. So please go ahead. Yeah, um, she's from Oklahoma. Um, okay. City. I mean, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, so a, a then, very storied and historic place <laughs> my goodness yes indeed but yeah that that's a whole nother um <laughs> yeah but anyway um you know they were rural people they were you know uh sharecroppers so they you know were into the land and agriculture so um you know one of the things with um me going into the design practice i had to really figure out what the African-American material culture was and yes. you know, really yes. started examining it. It's, it's really nature, you know, and yes, uh, absolutely. And, and the aesthetic too. And I think the African-American aesthetic really comes from nature. And I, I found this amazing book of um, poetry. It's like 400 years of African-American poetry. I mean, starts, yes the 1700s when we weren't even allowed to uh, read and they were writing these beautiful poetry and you could really get an insight to what the nature, what how they viewed nature and it was still from the gaze of an African, you know? In yes, exactly, exactly. Which, which is, which, we'll, we'll always work with the land. The land and oh, the people yeah. were so connected from where we came from. Right, right, right. So it's, the, the, the poems are really extremely visual. 
And okay. uh, so these are some of my uh, photographs. These are photographs from um, Central Park in the fall. I really love going through the parks and looking at the trees when um, the leaves are down because um, African Americans, uh, we tend to be readers and seers and visionaries and some ways of getting some kind of grounding when the world isn't on your side. The yes, best, best yes. place to go is nature, really, you know, and go on the nature yeah, walk. No, I was just going to say, I love these pictures. Yeah, because this particular one, I don't know if we can get it a little more, there you go, a little more in focus, okay. but this knot that you found on the tree so looked like a human head, like a mask. Yeah, and this is one tree, and this is the other side of the tree. It looks like a, a cat, you know? But these yes. are warts, and what they would do in the park the uh they would go through the park and you know the um the um maintenance people would go through and cut these warts off you know oh wow oh so, you know but before they would do it they would tie these yellow uh ribbons uh, uh ribbons around the tree and you know that they would the other guys that would come through and do the cutting they would know where to when the um what trees to cut the warts off so for years yeah. i saved this tree i would take the uh <laughs> take the ribbon down. I love it. I love yes. it. Well, what's interesting is I collect masks, and I love him. He oh great. my God! If you, if I would have got there in time enough, because I guess they got hip to what I was doing, and um, if I would have <laughs> got there in time when they were doing the cutting, I would have asked for this work. You know? Yeah, he's beautiful. Yeah, and this is in Prospect Park. This and okay. interesting. This is in Prospect Park in the area where the um, they used to have the drumming circles, you know? Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. That was a favorite spot. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So the yeah. Book go all up into the uh, trees and everything. And this is another amazing book of North American maroons that was um, a I'm wondering if you can pull pull your you're either for, closer or further away because it's a it's blurrier than it has been when we've done our tests so it looks I want blurrier. to make sure that people can see yeah it was a bit blurry and before it was very clear so i want to make sure that everyone can see it now how is it it's if i go goes in and out and read it probably yes, closer closer is better yes closer okay. is better yes yeah this is an amazing book of north american maroons which I didn't know. I knew of the Maroons in Jamaica and um, um, Sierra Leone and, um, mm -hmm. you know, the parts of, of um, outside of, of, of North America. But I didn't know that. And really, I didn't know that they were called Maroons because, you know, everybody has folks in their families that would disappear and reappear that have these outstanding survival skills. And uh, yes, pretty yes. Much that's uh, who these people were. But these um, people, they never left plant the plantation. They would run, they would leave the plantation, but they wouldn't leave the area because their family members were still enslaved. So they were kind of like an underground um, uh, communication system. They would move, oh, wow. they would move all around and be able to. Um, communicate with people, connecting folks up and stuff. So this was a, a an amazing community. Plus, I heard that they were doing um, ex excavations, trying to um, find their material culture. But their material culture was made out of things that would decompose. You know, it was like um, right. So they left no trace. And you know bones teeth yes. skins you know yes all that stuff so like it's really hard because they they were in the swamps you know right they were in the can, you, can you show us some of those homes that you had that you had shown me that had the um that have the 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 furniture and things that were made by some of these people okay i'm gonna get to those but but first oh. this this is um my niece and one of her little favorite play this is in seattle one of our little okay. public forests in, in seattle this is one mm -hmm. of the trees that she likes to meditate in you know it's like a hallowed tree it's, it's which, which it's, yeah which is gorgeous and taps into this whole thing that we've been talking about for years from the trend point of view forest bathing where you really go and get yourself immersed in yeah. a forest and and completely disconnect and allow yourself to be centered 
uh, by nature, which is what we so need right now. Yeah, and really get acquainted with the trees because, you know, everybody has a favorite tree. This is my favorite tree in this forest, you know. Yes. It's like, um, I always have to make sure there's no snake eggs in, in, inside, <laughs> you know, no nesting snake eggs before I climb in. But this is yes. my favorite tree in Seattle. Really, really, um, you know, connect with and get acquainted with nature. And this is um, uh, slave quarters in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. and of course, these were all um, um, built by the enslaved African Americans and stuff. This is inside. And the uh, connections of these furniture pieces, is, this is not colonial. This is uh, another kind of um, uh, structure system. You know, yes. the, uh, the, the mattresses were suspended by rope and then there's no nails or anything to these um, furniture pieces, but they're all like pegs. And that yes. was interesting to um, look at from a, a, a furniture designing point of view, because like this, these pieces could just be stacked, stacked in um, exactly. pots of uh, wood. And then of exactly, course, and yeah. they can be taken with them. They can oh. be disassembled quickly, and they can move. Right, right, right. Yes. Just rope, and the rope would tie everything together, and you know, because like the mattress is like straw. You know, it's like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the um, the pottery. This is a pottery uh, by yes, Dave the Potter. Dave the Potter. Yes, yes. from eighteen hundred to eighteen seventy in Inglefield, okay. South Carolina, and it's said that he created um, forty thousand um, pots. And the thing about forty thousand. Wow. Forty. Yes, forty thousand. I had the. I got to research that more, you know, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, what it was, um, the um, the plantation that he was on, the owner had um, about four um, shops of just making pottery. So I guess that was the business that they were dealing with. So he was yes. out all these pots, him and, you know, other folks that were in there making pots with them and stuff. Right. But he was writing poetry and his name on um, these pots, which I, which I think is very interesting that he got yeah, away with it, you know. But, yeah, his pottery is amazing. Um, yeah, and they still exist now. Some of, some of them, you know, I don't think they've found all, you know, 40,000. But, you know, they may be in people's homes and they don't even know it. You know exactly, exactly. And what I loved about his work was he had very simple shapes. His glazes were really from nature, so oh, he yeah. was drawing from what he could find. Yeah. Um, and and the forms, the clay itself was very rustic, very very um, rural. But he would bake these incredible uh, shapes that were that to your point were long lasting, and they stored water and food and right. whatever was needed at the time. Yeah, grains and stuff. Yeah, they were yeah. precious for their uh, glazes, you know, they were, you know, this was, everything was from the uh, the environment. And this is... And can, uh, there you go, pull that back a little, so make sure that, yeah, there you go, because yeah. these are stunning. Yeah, these are stunning. Yeah. Um, this is um, work by a Philadelphia ceramic artist who has um, um, a, 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 a fundraiser on right now on her, um, on her Instagram site. Her name is Yink uh, Orofindia. And okay. it, it's um, a craft community. I think that's, um, I think hopefully she's viewing, but uh, craft community, she's auctioning. I mean, she has the fundraiser for another artist and uh, okay. she's selling some of these, um, these, um, these mugs. Okay. Which are very beautiful. Yeah, there you go. I was going to say, if you can get that in so it's clear, because, and tell us what those patterns are, are derivative of. I love this story. Yeah, these patterns are from the um, quilts from the Underground Railroad. So um, it, yes. it, it, it has a very, you know, um, it, it, it well, like the message, craft community. Thank you. Craft community. Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> yeah, that's always on point. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. This is this is um, this is a continuation of the African American aesthetic, which I really, really appreciate. You know, yes. Because yes. since we were really severed from our um, culture on the continent, you know, we don't know our last names. We don't know right. anything. You know, 
Yes. Uh, we yes. don't even know each other. We may be co uh, re blood relatives. Related. So, <laughs> right. You know, uh, all, all we have to go on is um, our 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 consistency here on on this continent, and um, exactly kind of um, you know uh, kind of putting together our aesthetic that way. And this yeah. is oh, yeah. some uh, sharecroppers' homes, and uh, this is. On the right hand side, this is one of the quilts from the G's Ben quilters. And you know, the thing about the G's Ben quilters is they weren't trying to do fine art, but it was coming out no. that way, you know. Exactly. Exactly. I I had the pleasure and the honor of working with a few of the women when I worked on a project a few years ago called the Southern Rural Black Women's Initiative across well, the Black Belt in three states. And I got to see some of the quilts that were still around, but so many of them have been dispersed now um over time but to your point they were making something that was functional oh, and God. it was about their own personal aesthetic in fact i wore my necklaces today because of that particular quilt because it reminded me of the color and the bars of black mixed in <laughs> right right yeah they were doing something very special and this is a photograph of the inside of one of um their homes they were sharecroppers also and you see on the wall they have the um the news this, you might need to move in a little closer okay to get the you can see on the wall yes. and they yes. they were making these um quilts just from any kind of scraps because they didn't have anything you know like mm -hmm. old work clothes or whatever rag that a person's clothes would fall apart or whatever they would piece it together to make quilts to keep warm you know this yes. was utilitarian Text. Exactly, exactly. Totally functional, and they made right. them from their husband's work shirts, yeah. and torn, you know, pants, and it was just—they are fabulous in person. Yeah, they are very beautiful, very beautiful. There's a um, nice um, study here, mm -hmm. just um, looking at all the quilts because you know they all have their kind of. Um, this one is. Can you pull that one in a little closer? This is also one of my favorites in terms of color. Being a color person, yeah. Look yeah, at the color on that. Yeah, it's the, so special, so special. And then the composition of the patterns too. You know, mm -hmm. it does very, mm -hmm. very interesting. Um, has very interesting visuals to it. And then of course this is the late John Lewis. In his quilt, in his home, I'm trying to get a good, um, this is a beautiful, um, beautiful quilt. Um, Michelle Bishop is going to have a conversation with some of the women that worked with um, John Lewis with his quilt making, you know, and yeah. as this Mantra Monday on um, the Harlem Needle Arts. Um, yes. Can you pull, we're, we're getting several people asking if we can get it more in, in focus because it really is beautiful what you're trying to show us and we're seeing it in a very blurry way for some reason. I'm not sure what's is this causing bad? that. Um, it is there's, better as we get no closer, focus. but it's, it's, yeah, it, it was not, yeah, when you and I reviewed it, it was a little bit better, but yeah, this way you can see it. And it's funny, I just saw this picture, I think Bisa Butler uh, posted it when she posted uh, her post on John Lewis, and it was so nice that a quilter had found this great shot of him with this wonderful yeah. quilt. It's, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful quilt. Yeah. And it really says even more about this man. You really can't say more about him, but this even, you know, just really put... And then there's, in the back, you can see his um, fine art, and I think, I'm not really sure what yeah. that print is, but yeah. this is a friend of mine's mother, um, Miss Betty Turner, she is an amazing um, woman in general, but she mm -hmm. retired, oops, let me see, retired interior designer. Oh, and, oh you're getting a little bit better focus if you keep coming. Oh, uh, it's, 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 it's like, like one of them old style cameras, you know, when you had to do the angle oh, okay. focus. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, her, her mother, Miss... Um, um, Betty Turner's mother was a home economics teacher. She studied at Tuskegee University. And the mm -hmm. interesting thing about um, the home economic teachers back then is they would come to the students' homes to um, see if they needed any 
you know, domestic skills if they're, you know, if okay. they had things that they needed to, you know, kind of, they things that they didn't know about, you know, homemaking and stuff. The teachers would come mm -hmm. and, um, you know, help them out. And Miss um, Turner would say that, you know, her mother would bring them along with her when they would go to these um students' homes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Some of the visiting nurses that we used to have back in the okay. day. Okay. Okay. Because I, I had, you know, my mother had a visiting nurse for, okay. for me. I was kind of, you know, had uh, asthma and allergy and stuff. And um, these are some of her, um, this is her bedroom. And the thing that I like about her um, practice in design is she uses accessible um, fibers and um, material that's, you know, in her environment. You can see all the weaving in um, her and then like, uh, you know, all these. She said she found yes. this fence in a, in a thrift store and then the brat right. and found. And the painting right. on the wall is one of her paintings. And you can see yes. it there. And then so this again, is, how we bring nature indoors, how we live with nature, how it calms and grounds us. Yeah. And also she said that she has a, a chicken coop that she turned into a tabletop. I know it's gorgeous, you know. <laughs> she didn't have a photograph of it, but just her saying that um she, you know, she had converted a, a chicken coop into a tabletop and stuff, but her aesthetic is so elegant, you know, and yeah. so yeah. humble. And yes. something that uh, it's it it was something that used to be common, but um, yes. it's not that you know common anymore. And this is her bathroom, how on in her shower floor, how she uses the stones, and then mm -hmm. the wood material mm -hmm. that she uses is just so natural. And even with the yes. uh, towel, the um, rack for the mm -hmm. tights that um, yeah. And this is John Johnson. Let me see if I can the um uh, pull back some. Yeah. It's hard because we, we got it so clear before, but now I'm I'm it's still a bit blurry, so we're not seeing it very clearly. Oh um, really? but but while while she adjusts that, one of the things that we discussed was just the whole idea of what their offices look like, the kinds of color combinations and patterns. Uh and Zenobia knows so much about how Mrs. Johnson came to pull some of this together. Yeah, she was um one main thing that she was doing is she was um, making sure that the color um, palette complemented the uh, the complexions of the pe black folks that worked there. You know, she didn't want them to love. look alienated in um, the spaces and stuff. And, you know, being that she came pretty much from the same background as Miss um, Johnson, I mean, Miss uh, Turner, mm -hmm. really, as far as... Mm -hmm their family members being agricultural people and stuff. So it kind of um, blended over into the corporate world. And uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's um, it's really interesting how, although a lot of these things, she had a lot of these things designed, you know. Yeah. You know. That these, you might, I mean, we really are seeing very blurry. So if you can move, I'm not sure whether it's in or out uh, from your side. Um, really? But it's very... It's very hard, yeah. Okay. You can't see it at all? I mean, you can kind of make it we out? We can see it, but it's very blurry. Yeah, we see it, but it's very blurry. But, but really? yeah, the sto their story, as, as Wendy's saying, is an epic story of how they, they were able to pull this together. And th their oh. offices are, are, they should be just a museum in and of themselves. Yeah, and the good part of, about their um, their aesthetic of their of their own um, um, building is that they didn't have anybody that they had to answer to as far as the aesthetic was concerned. They was all right. green lights, so that that in itself. And a lot of those rooms are traveling because I know the kitchen is in in New York now. It, well, oh, okay. it closed down, but it's it's on exhibit in New York. And Where, this, what? I beg your pardon. Oh yeah, and I see this is one of my favorite rooms, and we really can't see. You can't. Wow. No, it's so blurry. Um, it's real blue. But I really, yeah, but the color is what's so fabulous in this. Just the whole idea of how how gorgeous the color combinations were, how bold and and warm. She used a lot of the warm side of the palette, and again, as you say, she did it to to complement the skin tones right. of the folks that were working there and coming in and out. You can really see 
um, you know, that, that beautiful thread of the warm, the warm tones. Yeah. And the patterns of the, um, of pan patterns and textiles, uh, patterns and textures of the textiles. Yes. Um, yes. Very much so. Yeah. This one's one of my favorites. Those bold it's, chevrons. Yeah. Is yeah. The, this on the far right is the kitchen. What I was doing is I was, um, um, grouping them up with, um, African Americans from the 1920s, you know, just to mm -hmm. see how that aesthetic evolved and stuff. But yeah, this mm -hmm. is the, the on the far left is the lobby going towards the L of escalators, and on the yeah. right is the, is the test kitchen where they used to test a lot of the recipes. I don't know. If okay, you, is this better? Mm -mm, yeah. Not really. We're still seeing it very. I mean, we can see some indication of color, but we can't make out the details in the way that we could previously. I'm not sure why that's that is. Interesting, because um, I see it really clear. Clear, yeah. And then that's you. <laughs> this is me in one of my childhood uh, abodes. You know, this is uh, in Seattle, Washington. It's a Japanese uh, tea garden. Um, okay. Me, back I'm going to ask you to move a little faster because I want to get to the, the okay. things you want to talk at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this is in the space. And this is the, uh, obviously in the springtime when everything is in bloom. This is me skipping the same rocks. And, you know, mm -hmm. I have a thing with the um, sculptured shape of rocks and stuff. And this is the tea house. And um, yes. it's an interesting story with that and me and the tea house. I would always see people, adults going in there for the tea ceremony, and I never, I never went into the tea. So I never dealt with it. I don't think they would have let us kids in there anyway because we were dirty and loud and all like that. But you know, someone, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt for a second. And say someone's saying, touch your screen to focus. So let's see if you do that. If that might help us, because this is my your screen pieces. That is I certainly, your screen is focused and yeah. on the phone as well. My phone is focused too. Is it real? Okay. That's amazing. This is better, but this is, yeah, this is one of your pieces, and I wanted everyone yeah, to see how beautiful is, that is. This is a, a tea house, and on in the bottom right in here, you can see, if you can see through these little, little thingies, is, is a teacup with uh, steam coming out of it. But this uh, is a, a reader, you know, like you would go to a reader and you would have tea, and the tea, uh, reader would leave you to read the tea leaves. But this is just to give scale of the um, mm -hmm. crochet. Um, and this is all crochet? Oh, single stitch by one person, me. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How long did something like that take? Uh, it, took, uh, it took a while. And I usually work on more <laughs> than one piece at one time. Um, it took okay. Like, it, it, so I really couldn't break it down. Um, okay. Because, you know, since, since it's like a, a straight through thing, like, I, I needed to entertain myself more um, and have other things <laughs> going on at the same time. So this is, um, hi, Heather. <laughs> so this is um, one of my teas, one of my brands. Is this blurry too? Can you? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's blurry and I don't know why. This is her teas and I really wanted you yeah. all to see them because she's, the, the artwork on them was taken from the same kind of artwork that you see um, in in her in the piece we just saw with the tea houses, her wonderful concentric circles, and the ones that you see in mosaic at the channel at the number seven stop, where you see those wonderful uh, that canopy of these great circles. These mandalas. So this one is which which flavor? This is oh god, you can't even read it. Mothership, and uh, okay, it's um, it's rooibos, chamomile, vanilla peppermint spearmint and roses actual uh rosebuds in there and it's very it's it's for when you know women get together and you want to have a little tea gathering and conversation and uh, pull back a little let's see what happens if you pull back a bit in this particular one because i keep seeing spinning so i don't know whether the spinning is on, wow, on your well when i no. pull back i'm seeing spinning oh, okay so you need it to be closer. Okay. Okay. What's so that? you have to tell us what each one is because we can't read them. Okay. And this is Mojo Rising. This is like um, for like you just want to meditate and, you know, go deep in thought. And it's Red Robos, Calandilas, Bergamot, 
uh, jasmine, buds, blue cornflower, and spearmint. And I love that you put flowers within. You oh, have yeah. You some flowers in all of your mixtures, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, it's tasty, full of flavor because these um, uh, teas are from the continent of Africa, and that's another story. It's uh, a friend of mine's um, mm -hmm. family's business, and this is Mastermind um, Elixir, and this is for this is a scholar mm -hmm. drink, and this is hibiscus, orange, grapefruit, papaya, Kenya black tea, maple, and figs. So this is a wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, you they all sound delicious, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I tend to drink a lot of this when I'm drinking it. Uh, I don't know. Is <laughs> still doing this? Um, okay, and this is golden slumber. Yeah, we're still not. Yeah, yeah. this is for children okay. when uh, they will not go to sleep. This will knock them out, you know. But you got to wake up for the, the peeing in the bed, <laughs> you know. The but the red rubber, oh, okay, hibiscus mm -hmm. flowers. Uh, elderberries and strawberries and this will put them out okay <laughs> they're down now people are asking if these are still available are any of them still available uh no they're not but i think i may be going back into production because i want to do my african-american tea ceremony because that's a very it, the tea ceremony is very is the very um uh, necessary ceremony, especially uh, with the things that we're going through now. Um, it's very powerful, and is when you don't have answers. Uh, yes, that's what you do. You go into the ceremony, and you're served by the tea master. It's a very powerful um, and necessary mm -hmm. ceremony. Um, and this is the tea company, the uh, Karanda. Um, Serengeti Tea uh, Company that um, does all my teas. Um, this is in on um, in Harlem on 125th Street. I'm trying to get my notes. Yes. At, um, 22 East 125th Street in Harlem. They're closed now because of the uh, pandemic. But Hamilton C. Dukba yes. Martin is the owner of this. His family. Oh, he's a dual citizen, uh, African American and African, because his the mother his mother was an enslaved African, and when they had um, you know you, certain folks could go had options to go back to Liberia and establish that his mother was one of those people that went back to Liberia. She was an African American, and then the father was. Um, from Liberia, so he has dual citizenship now, and like they were had coffee, tea, cocoa plantations, and now I think they got into honey too. But they have okay. about hundred acres of um of of land over there that they're producing all these products. Wow. And what I wanted to say also about this is um the uh, restaurant in there. Um, that's the that's the room. Yeah. Yeah, Duba is um, an artist also. He had to make a deal with his family to be artist and businessman. So he kind of incorporates, he's a, a brilliant artist. He incorporates his um, okay. aesthetic in, in his buildings and stuff. And this is some of the teas. Can you see this? We can see them, but for whatever reason, they're very blurry yeah. still. Yeah. And, this and they are, I, I apologize, everyone, because these are such lovely shots and the teas look so delicious and so refreshing and we're sorry that he's closed right now when we most need him to oh, sort of ground yeah. ourselves <laughs> yeah. it's like going to a hopefully spa. he'll be back soon yeah his teas not only have the tea but he blends a lot of juices natural juices in there and spices so it's really mm -hmm. a treat i don't think i've never t i have my favorite but i never tasted one i didn't like and uh, okay so you can see that there's a lot of um, I mean, look at that oh. yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of flavor teas blended with mm. and then you know the lavender is in there too and then you know teas blended yeah. with the juice and this is a oh, blend too this is probably like a a, a white tea blended mm -hmm. in juice and then you know the um lime and this is more citrus drink but like I said he's yeah. a, this is self this is like this is like a gumbo 
the till tea or something, you know, all these different fruits oh, and like it looks tongue. so delicious. Yeah, with and so uh, refreshing. <laughs> yeah, with with the tea as the base and everything. And this is um Rose and um Karen Rose at Sacred Vibes Apothecary and Botanica in Brooklyn. Great. She's at three seven. Yeah, bring that down a little. Okay. Bring her. Bring three, her down. We don't see her face. There we go. You yeah. don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. Three seven. A R G Y L E Road in Brooklyn. But Argyle. Uh huh. Yeah, she is the one to go to if you have a problem. She knows how to really blend um, these um, teas and herbs and everything. I had after Hurricane um, Sandra. I think that was what it was. And and that hit. Uh, Harlem, um, my um, my store studio got um, hit, and there I was gone. I wasn't in town when it happened, and um, I had mm -hmm. black mold in the studio when I came in, and I, evidently I inhaled it, and I didn't want to really deal with the uh, antibiotics, so I went to her, and she gave me this tea blend. I had to drink it for about six months, but it cleared it up with no side effects. You know, when you take antibiotics, it kind of strips yes. your um, your good bacteria out and yeah. it imbalances, exactly. your food, you know, and you start getting other infections. So I didn't want to deal with that. Plus, you know, trying to fight that thing. And then like doctors were telling me there is no way of getting rid of it because, you know, black mold will kill you. So I said, OK, I have to. Exactly. Exactly. Well, here. that's what's wonderful when you think about, you know, the fact that that the land, you know, the earth has so much that it, it can give us that that really does speak to the well-being, uh, to wellness in general. Um, you know, that whole idea of sustainability ties back into it because it all goes back in to the land and just feeds it to do it again. And this is something that we as from our culture, from our earliest days, have always known. Uh, you know, African African Americans, Black people, pe people from the Caribbean, Native Americans, uh, Asian, you know, people. Especially, all of all of those cultures really do have a connection to nature in such a deep and profound way, and have always worked with the land. Right, right, and this, you know, and storytelling also goes in there. And this is uh, exactly. paradise, a, a, a mystical character, urban mystical character that I created. And her outfit is crocheted. I don't know if you can see all this, but, you know, she comes. We, we're not seeing it clearly, but please describe it because you talked to me about it and it was, she was marvelous. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the apron and a dress and her apron has wings on it, you know, because the black women I knew, my, you know, coming up, they were magical. They could do like the impossible and it did seem like they could fly and their hands were just. <laughs> You know, they they could just make anything the most complex um, thing you can think of. And her broom has all these adornments, but it's adornments from flowers made from magazines and everything. And her hat is um, her mm -hmm. is crocheted also. And um, mm -hmm. other mystical character i don't know if you can see this also but she's another sister paradise and she's a conductor of the cosmos and that's her conducting the cosmos and then mm -hmm. the um and do the colors have significance in those two no they're just um combinations of things that you would see in nature you know things sprouting and you know just that whole funky element in nature and okay Again, your aesthetic of funk. <laughs> oh, right, right. And this is another, this is a digital. Um, I love this one. Did for a public, temporary public piece in uh, Seattle, Washington, Sister Paradise. And um, her, you know, live, this is about really uh, live food. And, you know, this young man is strong because he eats his greens. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. I love it. So, what are you working on next? What are your next, uh, your next projects? A, a new body of work. I'm I'm kind of working on a few projects at the same time. A new body of work. Um, it's uh, they're kind of like these dreamscapes, and it's going mm -hmm. more into. Um, I, I'm having um, difficulty people comprehending what this this whole practice the functional design and, and the material culture and sustainability and, you know, the African-American aesthetic and, you know, it's, I'm yes. really, and I'm trying to figure out ways to really communicate it 
And uh, so the next phase is going to be these visuals. I want to put these, there are these kind of photo, photo stories, and they're going to be formatted like um, uh, uh, graphic novels to tell these stories. Okay. Like, this is kind of oh, what, wonderful. what this is. This is like another supernatural black bohemian <laughs> urban mm -hmm. lady and she's holding mm -hmm. mountain goat uh, mountain goats are uh, something that's very common in uh, the pacific northwest where i'm from and they just climb yes. you know and i like that as far as um as far as um icons you know for for uh -huh. you know, just, you know african americans just climbing you just climb and they're not even climbing right. to eat. They're not climbing to have their babies in safe places. They're just climbing just to get to the top of a mountain, you know? And this is another, yes. this is another yes. part of they, it. They want to be at that highest point. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if it's the air or something. And then, like, if there's one, more than one up there, one of them will climb on top of the other one's back, you know? So, like, they just climb. They're just climbing. <laughs> You know, and this is a floor. I love it to get even higher. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what it is about that climb. But, um, you know, this is one of the uh, other instances. They have that tenacity? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oops. And I guess, I guess that's. Now, where was, where's that installation? This where's was the, in Seattle. Where's this last installation? Uh, well, this was in Seattle, Washington at um, one of the cultural um uh, city, one of the city cultural offices, and um, this was okay. in a in one of their out outdoor windows and stuff. This was the floor, and this is one of the walls. Okay. Had two walls and a floor, but I thought oh. I had um, the image of the installation um, all together, but I I don't have this that in here. Okay. But um, yeah, may, maybe I maybe I do. Oh, there it is. So let me just ask while you're looking, I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions because we've got just a couple more minutes before we're going to have to go. Um, I want to thank Wendy again and Gretty for all their help technologically and the support for doing this. Uh, for, there it is for allowing us to have some time here with Zenobia and to be, you know, sort of engrossed in all of the things that she's working on and thinking about. Uh, so does anybody have any questions that they'd like to ask us? Now's the time. Yeah, and I also want so you, while, while they're coming in, yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much, Wendy, for this opportunity. This is so um, so kind of you to share this platform with me and stuff. I really appreciate I appreciate meeting Patty and having me our Me too. We be, yeah, this is my new bud. Yeah. Um, it's been wonderful just having these conversations just to learn about all that you're doing. And did you want to speak about the uh, project in D.C. at all? Oh yeah, the African I mean the um Martin Luther King Library um in Washington yeah. DC. It was supposed to open this coming September, but um the the uh, you know with this uh pandemic it's going to open sometime in 2021. I mean, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 21. Um but we're really not um clear on the um the dates yet. Um but okay. yeah, that was uh that that was hand crochet, copper wire, twenty six gauge copper wire, different colors. Wow, you know, mm -hmm. feeling. I wanted copper wire because copper is a conductor of energy and is a place of learning. So I wanted that whole atmosphere to be charged. Right. Um, now I have one last thing. Somebody just said, "Can you just speak a bit about your inspiration for the installation at the number seven? Those beautiful circles that are above us in the number seven subway station at Hudson Yards." Yeah, that's inspired by um, the cosmos, you know, with the farmer's almanac, how agricultural people live by the farmer's almanac and, you know, how the compositions of the, of the stars, you can tell when it's time to plant whatever, when even when different animals are, are breeding, you can tell when that mm -hmm. season is and if you're a fisher, fisherman, you can tell when certain schools of fish are traveling through. So that's... Um, mm -hmm what that is and also oh, okay. it's kind of like um it's like my gift of you know it's a bright part of the morning and bright part of the night you know when you're going yeah. through there coming through going to work or leaving work because that is like 
there. It's not too residential down there. People are either tourists coming through there or going to yes. the center or going to yes. the Hudson Yards um, shops and everything. So it's 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 kind of like you know this is this is from the African American experience, the uh, textiles and everything. It's it's something that I wanted to share. That's common in our home, but it's not really. It's not even when you're studying textile design or design in general, you don't really get the aesthetic of the African-American homemaker. That's the truth. That's really the truth. Well, it's 45 minutes, so I think we are, are, we are done. Um, I want to thank you so much for taking us through this. I am sorry to those for the te technology in terms of not seeing them as clearly. Uh, several people are asking if it's possible to see the images at some point in another format. So we'll talk with Wendy and Zenobia and see if that's something we can do. But we want to thank you so much for um, spending time with us. We want to thank Zenobia for taking the time and, and sharing some insight into her aesthetic of funk, <laughs> which I just love. Um, and we hope that you'll tune in again with us uh, because we're going to continue to do more of these. So thank you again to Wendy, to Granny, yeah, thank to Zenobia you. Bailey. <laughs> thank you. Pat. And great to see everybody. And thank you and goodbye. Okay. Have a great one. Stay safe. Stay well. Definitely. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>